Welcome to the Mystic Media Channel. I'm your host, Ravina Rastavan, a.k.a. The Realist Astrologer. And this is uh, in honor of some of the requests that I received to do XXX Tentacion's uh, chart. So, um, as you can see, I have a hard time um, pronouncing his name because, um, actually, when I first learned about this story, I was like, okay, how do you pronounce that name? I'm not making light of the brother or nothing like that, but I'm just explaining my whole uh, thing with his name. So even my daughter, who is 18, she was like, oh, yeah, I like him and stuff like that. And I was like, how do you pronounce his name? She was like, I'm not even sure. So I went through a bunch of videos and I couldn't find the pronunciation of his name. People were just calling him X. People were calling him, you know, just saying him and stuff. And I was like, okay. And then finally I found it and... So it's XXX Tentacion. I'm sorry, I'm old. I'm 42. I'm not into this young hip hop, so forgive me. But I'm just like that name. I'm just, okay. So there has to be a reason why his name is so, I'll say unique. Now he is an Aquarius. Uh, he was born on January 23rd, 1998. And excuse my voice because it's the morning time. But I wanted to uh, get this video done while I have the motivation. And I'll be doing this reading in real time, meaning I'm about to pull his chart. So I haven't looked at his chart yet. So sometimes it helps for me to do it in real time so I won't procrastinate because I am a Sagittarius and I am a big time procrastinator. So I got the motivation this morning because I had a uh, one of my subscribers, they asked me to do um, the video on him, video reading. So I was like, okay, I'll think about it. And then today I was just like, okay, let me just do it now while I have the motivation. So again, excuse my voice. Um, it's the morning time and I woke up a few hours ago. Usually I'm at my best at night. So, um, but let me just do this reading. Okay. So we're just going to call him X because I'm not going to pronounce that name throughout this video. So, X was born on January 23rd, 1998 in Plantation, Florida. Let me just put that in. So, he's a baby, or he was a baby, 1998. Plantation, Florida. I'm about to pull up Astro Athena to see if they have his birth time. So, bear with me. But while I'm pulling this up, I just wanted to say hello to everyone. And I hope everyone is enjoying their summer. I'm certainly enjoying mine. It's been hot here in Phoenix, but not too hot, not unbearable. And we just had a couple of rainstorms, which is good because that broke up the heat. Because it's monsoon season in Phoenix. So uh, that's how we do it here. Usually we don't get much rain, which I like. But in the summertime, it's, and a few times in the winter, we'll, we will get some rain. Okay, so I'm pulling up Astro Thing right now. Oh, excuse me, my internet is running really slow today. Now, I actually like Astro theme because they're pretty good with getting birth times of celebrities. And they have an extensive uh, catalog of birth charts for celebrities. Oh, now my internet wants to act up. Okay. Okay, here it is. Okay, so it says unknown birth time. So we're just going to... <clears throat> Look at the chart as is. Now, I don't know how tall he was, but I'm going to read a little bit from Wikipedia. Because I don't know much about this guy. So, it's like I'm really looking at this with, like, baby eyes. So, he was born January 23rd, 1998, Plantation, Florida. I'm going to put his birth time at 8 a.m. This is an arbitrary birth time, but I like to put something. 
and I'm not really one of those ones uh, astrologers that are keen on using uh, noon birth time for unknown birth time. I don't know. I just okay. Now they're asking me. Okay, let me save this. Okay, first, should I look at his chart a little bit first, or should I read from Wikipedia first? Uh, let's see. I'm going to glance at his chart real quick. But him being a birth number 23, that's rather fortunate. And it can cause the person to be highly favored in certain areas. So I know he had a pretty big fan base. So that 23 could deal with that. It could deal with being... Um, having a multicultural background and it does look like he has a multicultural background uh also 23s can be world travelers 23s usually can live a good life so it's tragic that he was murdered let me just calculate his birth uh life path number like i said i'm doing this in real time so bear with me Thirty-three breaks down to six, so he's a, a sixth life path. That's about music, art, relationships. Okay, so like I say, he's an Aquarius. His son is an Aquarius, conjoined to Uranus. His Mars and Jupiter are in Aquarius as well, so he is somebody that I would consider to be a hardcore Aquarius. With his son conjoined to Uranus. That makes him very unique. He has a unique look even. Um, almost alien-like he look like. Actually, when I see a picture of him, like the picture they have on Wikipedia, he looks very, like, washed out. Um, he, he doesn't look healthy, I'll say that. So, And he just has this look where it's hard to explain, but... It's not a good look, I'll say that. Now, his son is also conjoined to Neptune, but Neptune is in Capricorn at the 29th degree, and that can deal with a tragic life or a tragedy that befalls him. Um, let's see. Now, the interesting thing is his son is not afflicted in terms of being in square or quincunx or opposition to anything, but it is you could, could consider it being afflicted or you could say besieged by those heavy planets. So Uranus and Neptune are flanking his son. And his son is basically, you could look at it as being squeezed by those heavy planets. So Uranus on his son can produce a life that is unique, that is extraordinary. Same with Neptune as well. But Neptune also deals with victimization. And Uranus can deal with upheavals, upsets. Oh, let's see. That Mars can join to Jupiter in Aquarius points to him having a large following. But it can also deal with him having friends that, friends or associates that, you know, he may not be able to fully trust. He has a very clean chart. Clean meaning he doesn't have many aspects at all. In terms of aspects, let me see. He has about, he has 23 aspects, which is nine conjunctions. But then again, I don't know what time he was born because they're adding the ascendant in there. His south node is in Pisces. That means that he's just naturally geared to be a victim. Let's see. Now, the interesting thing, aside from his son being besieged by Uranus and Neptune, he doesn't have much in his chart beyond that that can point to a serious issue. But I'll tell you where the death part comes in. Um, his Mercury is in square to Saturn and it's partile. Partile meaning they're both at the same degree. Mercury's at 14 degrees Capricorn. Saturn's at 14 degrees uh, Aries. 
So that can deal with death in your car because I believe he was murdered in his car. So let me just go to Wikipedia first. So even his first name, oh my God, it's unique. His name is Jose Dwayne Ricardo Onfoy. Now the name being unique on both ends, his stage name and his birth name, that deals with Mars being in Aquarius conjoined to Jupiter because Mars deals with your name. So whatever sign Mars is in can tell you about your name. The first house too, especially the ascendant. So with his Mars conjoined to Jupiter, that could deal with a very unique, extraordinary name. A name that has a lot of letters or, or where it's repeating like that XXX Tentacion. Like that's dealing with his name right there. Now, let me read from Wikipedia about him. So, Jose Dwayne Ricardo Onfroy, known professionally as XXX Tentacion, oh, they have the pronunciation right here, was an American rapper, singer, and songwriter. Born in Plantation, Florida, Onfroy spent most of his childhood in Lauderhill. He began writing music after being released from a youth correction center. That's at South Node in Pisces, already geared for prison some type of incarceration, institutionalization, and released his first song on SoundCloud in June 2013 titled News Flop. He was a popular figure in SoundCloud rap, a trap scene that takes elements of lo-fi music and harsh 808s. I know what 808s are, but I don't know what lo-fi is. And I know what trap music is. Onfoy released his debut album, 17, on August 25th, 2017 him released it on the 25th that could deal with that Pisces self node on for a second album was released oh it was called question question mark was released on March 16th there it is again see the seventh theme this is his Pisces self node um, coming into the mix it debuted in number at number one on Billboard 200 with his single sad and changes peaking at numbers one and 18 on the Billboard Hot 100 respectively now this is so amazing because his single sad and changes speak to that hookup he has with his son uranus and neptune so the changes single would be his son conjoined to uranus the sad single would be his son conjoined to neptune especially because ne neptune's in capricorn at the 29th degree that's amazing Onfroy was shot and killed in a robbery after leaving a motorcycle dealership in Deerfield Beach, Florida on June 18, 2018. That 18 is one of the uh, most challenging numbers. So a lot of murders happened on the 18th, actually. That Jim Jones massacre happened on November 18th, I think 1978, 79, one of them years. Okay. A little bit about his background. Jose Dwayne Ricardo Onfoy was born on January 23rd, 1998 in Plantation, Florida to Jamaican parents. So he's Jamaican. Okay. He had three siblings with one being half shared paternally. Onfoy was mainly raised by his grandmother, Colette Jones, due to his mother's financial situation. Now that right there deals with his moon being conjoined to Pluto. Because when the moon is conjoined to Pluto, or if it's in an aspect of Pluto, a lot of times when it's conjoined to Pluto, that can deal with being raised by your grandmother. It can also deal with where your grandmother had a lot of influence in your life. So he has moon conjoined to Pluto in Sagittarius. The Sagittarius influence deals with his background coming from Jamaica, because Sagittarius deals with foreign nations. Okay, da, 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 da. when Onfoy was six years old, he tried to stab a man attempting to attack his mother. Wow, that's moon conjoined to Pluto again because that the moon deals with his mother. Pluto can deal with, a, like that moon conjoined to Pluto aspect can deal with a mother that is being abused or attacked or whatever like that and was eventually put in a youth program before being forced to live with his grandmother. Again, that's that moon conjoined to Pluto uh, working out now about his birth time with that being said knowing that about his background 
you can safely assume that the moon and Pluto are pretty close together. So with the birth time that I arbitrarily chose, his moon is at the fourth degree of Sagittarius. Pluto is at the seventh degree of Sagittarius. So there's a good chance that he was born in the morning time, maybe even later than 8.15 a.m. So now I'm going to rectify it a little bit. I'm going to say this. It would make sense that he's in Aquarius rising because of his name, both of his names, and because of the way he looks. And like I said, he's a hardcore Aquarius anyway. So if you add the Ascendant in the mix, that basically brings it into even more focus. So I'm going, so right now with his, the birth time that I arbitrarily chose, and a lot of times I do it off of intuition. So I feel like that might be his rising sign Aquarius because that's what it's at right now. So with that 815 birth time that I arbitrarily chose, it put the ascendant at 21 degrees Aquarius. So I'm going to move his birth time up a little bit more, but that's not really going to change the moon. So we're going to keep it as is. Actually, yeah, I'm going to keep it as is. We're going to keep the moon at four degrees Sagittarius. Because that, that is close enough. That's only three degrees away from Pluto for it to have a major impact upon his life. So, okay. Going back to Wikipedia. Onfroy's interest in music initially started after his aunt persuaded him to begin attending a school choir and later church choir. Now, with that being said, we need to look at his Mercury to see where his aunt, to see how it manifests in his chart. So that would be his Mercury conjoint to Venus. Boom. That would be his aunt introducing him to music. And his Mercury is in trying to his Virgo North Node. And it's in sextile to his Pisces South Node. So that probably deals with his aunt being one of his past life um, partners, maybe in music. So she's been reincarnated in this lifetime to help him be reintroduced to music because with that Pisces South Node, more than likely he's coming from past lives or having a musical background or artistic background, what have you. Okay. Now, he was soon kicked out of the school choir after attacking another student. Now, at this point, I'm realizing he has aggression issues. He has problems with keeping his hands to himself. He is very much rebellious, so that deals with that hardcore Aquarius energy he has, but also in particular, his Mars conjoined to Jupiter in Aquarius. That right there is like, he's not going to allow anybody to, you know, push him around. He's not going to let anybody punk him, none of that. And he's all about principle. He's all about justice, all of that stuff. So anytime he perceives some type of injustice, He's liable to go off. He's liable to take matters in his own hands and deal with the person right then and there. He also has Mercury square Saturn, which can point to control issues. Also depression. And that boy did look depressed. That Mercury square Saturn can very much point to the way he looks, especially if he's an Aquarius rising because Saturn is one of the rulers of Aquarius. So if his Mercury is in square to Saturn, his Mercury is in Capricorn, that can produce an old look, like a where you look old before your time, especially like the, when you're younger. And that Mercury in Capricorn can just naturally produce someone that is prone to depression. So he just has that look. Matter of fact, I just got to call a spade a spade. When I first saw his picture, all I saw, I saw death in his face. And he even has a video where he's basically saying, yeah, if I die, if I get killed, if I get sacrificed, it's, I just want to, you know, I want to be known that, you know, I was an inspiration for my fans or something like that. So it did seem like he had a good heart. Don't get me wrong, but that hardcore Aquarian energy makes him very rebellious, very much, very willful. Like he's extremely willful. So he's the type of person where if there's a conflict, if there's a confrontation, he's not going to back down. All right. Reading on. 
Oh, he describes himself as a misfit. Oh, wait a minute. No, let me go back. But just saying that, he describes himself as a misfit. That's that hardcore Aquarius energy. But that's also, like I said, his son being flanked by Uranus and Neptune. Like somebody like that is going to feel like a misfit. Especially if you have to live like in American society where, you know, they expect you to fit into certain prescribed roles. So he was soon kicked out of choir school after attacking another student. Onfroy attended Margate Middle School where he was later expelled from middle school after a series of physical altercations. He was subsequently enrolled in Sheridan House Family Ministries by his mother for over six months. That points to the moon could join the Pluto as well, because moon could join the Pluto could deal with where you're living with people that are not your family. Which led him attempting to learn the piano and guitar. Onfroy attempt, attended Piper High School. Okay, let me go back. So her putting him in that um, Sheridan House Family Ministries basically points to his Mercury conjoint to uh, Venus as well because he was able to learn piano and guitar and his Mercury conjoint to Venus, again, it's in sextile to his Pisces South Node and in trying to the Virgo North Node. So that can point to his mother putting him in the family ministries and he, him learning music in the process. So in the process of him being there, he basically learned how to play piano and guitar. Onfroy attended Piper High School until he dropped out in the 10th grade. That's Mercury Square Saturn, him dropping out. He described himself as a misfit. Now, now th this is where I need to look at his third house to see if I'm on point with his proposed birth time. So he has Taurus on the third, Venus and Capricorn. is ruling in its retrograde that very well conjoined to mercury square and saturn that very well could be the dropout hookup so i could be very right with this uh i could be in the ballpark with his proposed birth time Onfroy was not the athletic type and said that he was insecure and depressed during his time in high school that's what i told you about the uh the depressed mercury square saturn that also deals with his son conjoined to Neptune at the 29th degree of Capricorn. So the depression part, that, that fits his birth time too because he has Gemini on the 5th. The 5th house would deal with where you find happiness. And Mercury is in Capricorn ruling the 5th. So that's somebody that they can't find happiness. They are, their life is rather bleak to them. They are rather depressed. And that can point to him not being the athletic type. All right. Career beginnings and look at me. I'm not going to go deep into this. Uh, 2007, released from prison. Okay, what did he go to prison for? Okay, in July 2016, Onfroy was arrested and charged with robbery and assault with a deadly weapon. After posting $10,000 bail, Onfroy continued to work on his debut independent album, Bad Vibes Forever, which had a slated October 31st, 2016 release date. The album missed the release date and was delayed due to Onfroy being arrested in October on charges of false imprisonment, witness tampering, and aggravated battery of a pregnant victim. Oh, wow. That's that moon could join the Pluto again because that could deal with him being abusive towards women. And usually it'll be because he learned that from seeing his mother be abused at an early age. Wow. Pluto is squaring his nodes. So that can point to death being a result of some uh, past life transgressions. So it's like he had some very heavy karma with Pluto squaring his nodes. And that could deal with the multiple criminal offenses he had that led to imprisonment. And basically that Pluto square in his North Node in Virgo is showing that it was very hard for him to evolve um, per his Virgo North Node 
because that Pluto is basically pointed to his criminal tendencies. Interesting. Now, let me see if he got any asteroids that really stand out. And then I got to hurry up and wrap this up because I'm probably going on like 30 minutes. I'm at 25 minutes. He has a stray of conjoined to Pisces. That's him going too far with, you could say, delusions at times. Um, actually, and it can point to a rather lengthy stint in prisons, or you could also just say institutionalization. Uh, let me see. He has Hebe conjoined to the moon, which reinforces um, the proposed birth time because... Hebe would be very close to the moon, only nine minutes away. And that can point to the abuse of the pregnant woman. I wonder if she ended up having a miscarriage because that definitely would uh aggravated battery of a pregnant victim. Let me let me click on this article because if she lost the baby, that definitely would fit that aspect and that would support the proposed birth time. Oh my God, it didn't even take me to it. Oh well. Anyway, one of y'all can let me know if that's what happened, if y'all know the details of the story. So basically this is saying, while he might've had a good heart and he might've you know, said things that were nice and endearing and stuff, he really wasn't a good person. Let's be real. Because he was bringing pain to people and he was very disruptive. He was, but again, it could point to what went on when he was young, his childhood. But still, as an adult, you can't use what happened to you as a kid as an excuse because you have to uh, try to be self-disciplined. But he really didn't have that self-discipline, even though his Mercury and Venus uh, were in Capricorn. They're squaring Saturn and Aries. So that can make him very much undisciplined. And then when his Mars can join to Jupiter, like I said, that makes him very rebellious, very willful. Uh, now, let me see. Like I said, let me look at. He has Psyche running parallel to Venus. Interesting because Anthony Bourdain had the same um, aspect. Venus running parallel to Psyche. That's interesting. So that could deal with. Um, some type of trauma that he experienced, perhaps at the hands of a woman, but it can also point to trauma or even death because Psyche is at the 18th degree of Scorpio. Remember, he died on the 18th. That could deal with um, death at the hands of an enemy, like a mortal wound, because Psyche will bring wounds just like Chiron will, but Psyche will bring wounds that don't heal. So it can even point to a fatal wound. And his Chiron is conjoined to Psyche. Damn, there's the mortal wound. So that's the mortal wound that was created. And Chiron, oh, I might be on point with his birth time because with the birth time I have, Chiron and Scorpio, and then remember, Chiron is conjoined to Psyche, squaring his ascendant. And that can deal with um, him being, um, him dying as a result of a mortal wound. And he was shot. Interesting. Okay, let's see what else he had. His Cassandra ran parallel to Uranus, meaning like he didn't take advice. Um, when it came to people dispensing wisdom to him, he would just rebel against it. Can also deal with a friend trying to advise him against being a certain way. Now, this is another indicator that his birth time might be on point because he has Lilith. The asteroid Lilith right on his moon. And that could deal with him being a pariah, him being feeling like a reject, him feeling like an outcast. And he did say he felt like a misfit. Boom. So I might be on point with his approximate birth time. Because that's very much. This can even deal with his background. So coming from Jamaica, he might have felt different. He had faith on conjoined to Jupiter. And that could deal with him creating, like, causing disaster. 
as a result of just him trying to, again, being all about principle. But this can also deal with him throwing caution to the wind and ending up having to pay a big price for it. So when it came time for that robbery, perhaps he could have prevented getting killed, but he might have, I don't know the details of the robbery. I'm trying to see if they had the details. They had the Drake feud, so he had a few with Drake. For lack of time, I'm not going to get all into like all this stuff, but this is where we can have a dialogue in the comment section about what else went down with him. But... Basically, like, it, his chart is basically reflecting his life to a T, even down to my proposed birth time. And like I say, he when I see pictures of him, I just see death. And it makes sense with what he got going on in his chart. And then that Pisces South Node, that can deal with him being trapped in that whole framework of being a victim, being just a life of sorrow, um, just where he feels like, He's drowning in a sea of misery, but it can also point to that music. So as you know, there's a lot of trouble artists. There's a lot of trouble musicians, and it's because of that Pisces influence. It like goes hand in hand. It comes with the territory. So that's why you have so many tragic stories dealing with musicians and other artists. But that's my take on XXX Tentacion. Um... Let me look at his um, fixed stars real quick before I let you guys go. I'm trying to get more frequent with the videos. He had Mercury can join the Vega, which is really good, but it can deal with short lived fame. Vega is like, deals with being like charismatic, having this magical uh, persona. And he did kind of look kind of magical. Like he had that, like, like I say, he has a very different look. And now that I think about it, he does have a Jamaican kind of look. His Mars, I mean, I'm sorry, his moon, if I'm right about the proposed birth time, would be running parallel to Zubin El Janubi. And that could deal with him just having some special talents and gifts and him being like a, a an inspiration to others or him creating like a movement. Y'all can confirm that if he created some type of movement. And then his Saturn is conjoined to Alpharetz. And that is a very positive... No, I can't say it's a positive star, but it's a star that can basically take you places in life. But it can also deal with where you're very restless. Like, you can't settle down. You can't stay calm. Like, you're always running and ripping. You're always raging. Then I just want to take a peek at his Arabic parts to see if I could be on... You got Jupiter conjoined to the Arabic part of catastrophe if I'm on, if I'm in the ballpark. But that's neither here nor there because there's a lot of factors in his chart that just points to how his life has turned out. So the main factor which points to his life being cut short, though, is his son being conjoined to Neptune at the 29th degree of Capricorn. So to reiterate, his son is in Aquarius at the third degree. And Neptune is at the 29th degree of Capricorn. At 29, like I always tell you, is a very challenging degree, arguably the most challenging degree. It deals with high pressure situations. It deals with conflicts internal and external. It deals with hardship at the early part of your life. Usually there's some type of uh, terrible situation involving the mother or some type of separation involving the mother, which is what happened. Because he ended up living with his grandmother. There's also often interference from third parties. There's often some type of third party that is threatening your sense of security. So, again, that is my reading for XXX Tentacion, better known as XXX. And I am signing off. If you would like a reading, just go to my website at rabina.com. Stay tuned for more videos.